and welcome to today's class on NMR. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to dissect this difficult topic into many subparts so that you can have a very good understanding of NMR and its applications. Okay, so NMR is not very well taught. Um, I believe a lot of it has been missed out um, and therefore students end up becoming confused and they try and memorize rather than really learn what it is and how it works. So what I'm going to try and do is split NMR into sub, uh, into kind of parts so that you can understand each part and then hopefully the goal is for you to eventually understand NMR. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to have to consider in NMR is where we have to consider the definition of nuclear spin. Okay, nuclear spin is the basis of NMR. It is what makes NMR actually possible. Okay, so the way um, it works, okay, is every single nucleus has a mass number in it. Okay, so if you have a look at an atom, oops, that one doesn't work. If you have a look at an atom, that one doesn't work either. Very good start. Okay. Sorry about that. If you have a look at an atom, okay, an atom is made up of electron shells and it's made up of a central nucleus here. So that's the nucleus. And those are the shells. Okay, now the nucleus in the center there has a mass number. And if you remember what the mass number is, the mass number is basically the addition of the amount of protons you have plus neutrons. So mass number, mass number equals to protons plus ne neutrons. Okay, so that part is what we're analyzing in NMR. Now, what you have to understand is that some of those nucleuses do not spin, others do. The difference between the one that spins and the one that doesn't is the way that the subatomic particles can actually arrange, whether it's evenly or odd. I'll show you how to understand this. Okay, so let's consider if you have two basketballs, for example. If you have a basketball here and a basketball here, or even if you have like a seesaw or something, it doesn't matter. Um, if you put six units here and six units there, and this weighs the same as that, that basketball um, will not spin because both sides of the that both halves are equal. Um, I think it's best to show you this via a seesaw example. So if I have a look at a seesaw. If there's Bob sitting here and there's Maria sitting here and they both weigh the same, this seesaw is not going to move. Okay? So that's common sense. Alright? So that will not be capable of magnetic spin. Of nuclear spin, sorry. But in the case, if we have something like a carbon-13 atom, okay, this time 13, um, to break it down evenly is not going to be possible because you can't have a subatomic particle. Okay, so you can either have six here or seven there, or seven here or six there. Regardless of what you have, that is actually not a balanced um, amount of mass. So what that basketball is going to do, if you're putting it on the table or something, it's going to roll. Assuming that the previous one hasn't, this one's going to roll because there's an imbalance of mass um, on both sides of the um, ball. Okay, again, if we look at our seesaw example, when we have a seesaw here and Bob standing, Bob sitting there, hopefully not standing. Um, so Bob weighs, I don't know, 60 kilograms and Maria weighs 70. Obviously, in this particular case, that's going to go down, that's going to go up, so there is some kind of imbalance. And that is what we're testing in NMR. We need to obtain, uh, we need to analyze only substances that contain atoms that are capable of nuclear spin. Now, why? So, nuclear spin, 
we have defined that. But the second thing that we have to actually discuss is why. Okay, why is nuclear spin actually an important uh, prerequisite for NMR? And the reason why is if, if I consider a um, particular particle just making something completely random up, okay, and I look at H1 NMR, we'll discuss what this means later on, but if, I, if we're analyzing H1 NMR, we're only focusing on the hydrogens of that particular molecule. And if we focus on them, we know that each of these hydrogens have only one subatomic particle in the nucleus, and therefore they are capable of spinning. Okay? And because they are capable of spinning, there is a law in physics which is called the right hand rule, okay? The right hand rule shows you the fingers pointing the direction um, of the spin, okay? And the thumb shows you the magnetic field generated by that spin, okay? So let's assume this naturally, this hydrogen may be spinning upwards like that, okay? Towards you, towards the video, okay? So as you know, if it's going like that, if it's moving like that, the magnetic field of that particular hydrogen may be pointing this way, okay? The magnetic, the magnetic field of that one may be pointing this way. It is all random, okay? But they're all capable of producing their own mini magnetic fields, okay? So these, these are called mini magnetic fields. And they are caused by nuclear spin of that particular atom. Okay, so this happens in a natural molecule. It does not have to be induced. It simply happens because those particular atoms will spin. They will do so naturally and they do so in every single um, molecule that contains hydrogens. Okay, um, so in the next tutorial we'll have a look at how NMR actually uses advantage of this particular ability of atoms to produce their own spin and we'll be having a look at splitting as well and the differences of the NMR techniques. So stay tuned, I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions please feel free to ask me, um, I'll be happy to answer. Thanks.